Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barker Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. We are back continuing to cover news here in the area. I'm Martin Falls, and joining us is Captain Brennan Mathern from the Lafouche Parish Sheriff's Department, and we appreciate him, as always, coming on board. Good to see you, Captain. How are you? Good, Martin. I'm, I'm doing great, man. Good to see you as well. Good. Always, we always see you in these circumstances. So one day we'll have to do lunch and just relax a little bit. But another shooting incident uh, in Thibodeau. Maybe you could tell us what happened. Yeah, ultimately, this one occurred on Saturday evening around 715. Our deputies uh, were called to the 100 block of Park Avenue in Thibodeau. Uh, when they arrived, they actually found a, a victim, a gunshot victim in his 40s. The gunshot was in his arm. The deputies actually applied a tourniquet uh, to uh, kind of, you know, they had to uh, conduct some life-saving measures, applied a tourniquet uh, in order to help stop the loss of blood. Uh, and uh, ultimately he was transported to a hospital. Uh, so that victim was in his 40s. We uh, also learned that uh, there was a victim in his 30s being treated at a local hospital as well. So at this time, we're uh, investigating this incident. Uh, we believe, obviously, that they're connected, and, and we have some information to go on, but we would love if the uh, anyone from the public has any information, if they could give us a call at the sheriff's office or contact us. Uh, you can also... Uh, submit tips anonymously through Bayou Region Crime Stoppers. You can call 1-800-743-7433. As you see on the screen here, you can also go to our website at crimestoppersbr.org. And the most popular way for people to submit tips is through our Bayou Tips mobile app uh, that is available in the uh, Android as well as the Apple App Store. Uh, again, that way you can not only submit a tip, uh, but you can keep track of it. We can communicate back and forth with tipsters all completely anonymously. You know, you made a good point, Captain, during the, your analysis of the situation. You said that officers supplied or uh, they put a tourniquet on one of the victims. We don't often give police officers credit. They extend themselves and they have to have some kind of uh, medical background, so to speak, for lack of a better phrase. But they do a little bit of everything, don't they? Yes, uh, we really do. Um, you know, when, when you're going through the uh, the, the training academy, uh, that you, you really try to prepare for any situation. Uh, you know, what you see on TV isn't always what uh, it, it's like for our officers. Uh, for example, uh, uh, you know, when you when you talk about responding to domestic incidents, is one, which is one of our most popular calls. You know, a husband and wife arguing, or uh, you know, a boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, you really never know what you're walking into, and uh, those can be some of the most dangerous situations as opposed to maybe an armed robbery where you know what you're getting into. Uh, so, you know, when, when you have a situation like this, as a first responder, you're literally the first person on scene. You can't afford to wait for EMS to arrive. If you're the first on scene, you have to take life-saving measures now. Now, that's whether, you know, someone else pulled the trigger or even if we had pulled the trigger uh, in, in that situation, uh, we would still try to perform life-saving measures, uh, you know, on, on the person, on the victim uh, that, that ended up shot. So, Ultimately, uh, that, that's just a, a snapshot of to what our officers face on a daily basis. You just never know what that next call is going to be. Well said. Let me ask you, the sheriff today is starting his ninth term. I know you've been with him for a long, long time. There's his first term and his now term and nine terms of office. And let me come back to the captain, if I could. Is this some kind of record? <laughs> We are, uh, I think we're still, the jury's still out, so to speak, on that one. We're researching it. Uh, we're, we believe that there is a, uh, a Louisiana a sheriff that was uh, in office for 44 years. So uh, he would still have a few more terms to go before he reaches that. But uh, it's getting close, right, Martin? Uh, 32 years in office. It'll be 36 at the end of this term. Uh, and really, you know, no potential end in sight. Uh, he hasn't given, as, as you know, he hasn't given any indication that, uh, retirement is on the horizon. So, uh, 
you know, look, as long as he keeps putting his name on the ballot, uh, you know, the, the citizens will have an incumbent to vote for. But, you know, that's 32 years now, uh, over 43 years of, uh, of service as a law enforcement officer. And I think that I think that he would agree that the thing that keeps him in uh, in office and, and, and with the times is his progressiveness, uh, understanding that it's a changing world and the world's a lot different than when he started on July 1st, 1992. Uh, and the fact that he's been willing to uh, transform with the times, I think, is what has kept him in office. You know, and I've watched people like Joe Waits, who's been around nearly 30 years as district attorney over here, and I watch Sheriff Craig Werber. And there's a transformation. When they get in, they're just young and ready to go and ready to do everything and take everything. And then they become the teachers. They The wisdom sets in and they become the mentors to a lot of people. Have you seen that transformation over the years? No question. Uh, I think with uh, Sheriff Weber, you know, look, uh, like you said, Martin, I've been here quite a few years now. I'm, I'm wrapping up my 13th year here at the sheriff's office. I spent six, six and a half years at parish government and years before that, as you know, in, in radio. Uh, but he still teaches me a thing or two every now and then. Uh, he's just a fountain of uh, legal knowledge and, and uh, professional expertise and leadership. Uh, and and I think that's what's uh, that's what's kept him relevant uh, all this time. And, you know, look, in uh, 2014, uh, we kind of set off to, uh, you know, on that venture of, of getting that tax passed for a, a new jail. And now we have the Lafouche Parish Correctional Complex. And, you know, it wasn't just a, a you know, close and shut case. That is a constant work in progress. And yeah, I remember uh, at our discussion back in 2013 uh, or in 2014 after the election happened that, you know, he basically said at the table, look, we want to have the best jail in the country. And really no one batted an eye because we all knew that that's what he wanted. And uh, now we are here we are in, in 2024 and we're well on our way uh, to making it there. So it's it's almost crazy that he took on such a large project uh, near what, what obviously would be the end of his career. But, uh, you know, he's still going strong and, uh, you know, even a heart attack couldn't stop him. So uh, here he is uh, going and into his ninth term of office. All right, Captain Brendan Mathurin, we appreciate you as well. Tell the sheriff hello, and I will see you on the next go-around. Thank you. All right, thank you, Martin. All right, there you have it. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Since 1954, Terrebonne General has been a beacon of health and hope in our community. As we mark seven decades of dedication to your well-being, Terrebonne General Health System remains committed to advancing health care, improving lives, and expanding our services to meet your evolving needs. In celebrating our past, we look forward to a future filled with promise and progress. Your health is our legacy. To discover more, visit tghealthsystem.com.